On the 24th of October 1965, a descendant of Genghis Khan, the Mongolian princess Dewa Nimbo, gave birth to an illegitimate child in Taiwan. Unbeknown to the princess, the father of the child was already married, which brought shame to the princess and caused her child to be cut off from his royal title of Prince Iskamin. At seven months old, several monks came and recognized the child as a reincarnated Lama. They requested to take the child to the monastery to continue his previous life's work. The princess rejected this great recognition. She said that if he was really a high Lama, he would eventually find his own way to the monastery. Soon after, his mother decided to give him up to an adopted family. He was given the nickname Xiao Niu, which means little bull in Mandarin. Throughout his childhood, he was ill-treated and ill-fed by his foster mother. It was not a pleasant childhood, yet he was a happy child. Later, his grandmother, Queen Dechen Min, brought Xiao Niu from Taiwan to Howell, New Jersey in the United States. She handed the child to a Kalmyk Mongolian couple, Dana and Boris Bogayev, who became his foster parents and named him Bocha Bogayev. It was in New Jersey that young Bircha found his strong attraction to Buddhism. Coincidentally, Rashi Jempel Ling, the first Tibetan Buddhist center in America, was located only 10 minutes away from Bircha's house. This became his favorite place to visit, much to the disappointment of the Bugayevs. Mr. and Mrs. Bugayev had high hopes for Bircha. They hoped that their lovely son would grow up to a wonderful job and a family. Bircha's strong inclinations to Buddhist teachings meant that he could be a monk in the future, and this possibility threatened the hopes of the Bugayevs. His foster parents started to hate the Dharma Center, and any connection between Bircha and Buddhism triggered an irrational anger in them. The foster parents filled Bircha's time with heavy household chores. After school, Bircha was expected to clean the entire house from top to bottom. If he missed a spot, he would be severely beaten. Later, the punishments were intensified and he was even abused mentally. Dana would go into his room in the middle of the night and she would threaten him that she would kill him by stabbing a knife to his heart when he was asleep. As a result, Bircha always slept lightly and with fear in his heart. Behind this American dream was a life of fear and pain. As Bircha became older, Boris and Dana continued to stop Bircha from going to the Dharma Center. They started to slander and defame his guru. To protect the Dharma Center and his beloved guru, Bircha made several attempts to run away and even attempted to commit suicide. On one of his runaway attempts, he was brutally raped at gunpoint. He managed to escape, but was caught by the police and sent back home to more severe beatings and screamings. Finally, one day, at the age of 15, Butcher stepped out of his home in New Jersey with two bags and $50 in his pocket. Alone and with nobody to rely on, he hitchhiked from New Jersey to Los Angeles, passing through different cities and sleeping on the streets along the way. In glittering LA, Bircha found another Dharma center, Tupten Dage Ling, which let him practice Dharma freely. He held three jobs to support himself while living and helping out in the Dharma center. At six feet two, with his exotic good looks, Bircha always drew people's attention. He even attracted the talent agents of Hollywood, and he was approached by Paramount for opportunities in the movie industry. At that time, there was a high lama from Garden Shatze Monastery, His Holiness Kep Che Zong Rinpoche, who was invited to teach at Tupten Dageling. Bircha became Zong Rinpoche's personal assistant, and in the short period of six months, Bircha gave all he could, serving Zong Rinpoche and taking care of the Dharma Center happily. 
Zhang Rinpoche was the first to reveal to Bircha that he was a Tuku, which means a highly respected reincarnation of a High Lama. This finally made sense of Bircha's overwhelming attraction to the Dharma. At that time, Bircha was at a crossroad in his life. He asked Song Rinpoche whether he should be an actor or a monk. Zhang Rinpoche told him that he would be very famous as an actor, but if he became a monk, he would benefit more sentient beings. Upon hearing this, Bircha folded his hands immediately and requested to be ordained. That evening, Zhang Rinpoche cut Bircha's hair to represent his intention to be a monk. This encounter with Zhang Rinpoche was the most important turning point of Bircha's life. Zhang Rinpoche then left America to return to India. One day, Bircha received a call and was told that Zhang Rinpoche had passed into clear light. Bircha was completely devastated. Over the next few weeks, he was torn whether to continue to go to India or to stay in America to be an actor. At the back of his mind was his promise to Zhang Rinpoche to become a monk. Bircha realized in his heart that he must keep his promise to Zhang Rinpoche and live out his destiny. Finally, Bircha decided to leave for India to begin a new chapter of his life. After all these experiences in his young life, just as his birth mother, Princess Dewa Nimbo had said, if he was really a High Lama, he would eventually find his own way to the monastery. So, from Prince Iskamin to Xiao Niu to Bircha Bergayev, after travelling halfway around the world, he had finally found his way back home. His Eminence Semtuku Rinpoche was recognised as the incarnation of a High Lama in 1991. As he ascended the throne, he made his vow. I am going to sit on this throne with the motivation that I will keep my promise to Song Rinpoche not to let people suffer.